morning. Welcome to worship here at our Savior's Lutheran Church in person as well as online. I invite you to join us for coffee and treats in the atrium just after worship service concludes. And then if you'd like to just uh, bring your coffee and treats into the fireside room for the book study today, they're actually going to be showing the movie. So even if you haven't read the book, if you'd like to please join us for that in the fireside room, they're going to start it up right away. Also, just a reminder that this Wednesday is our final Wednesday evening Lent dinner and worship service. Dinner starts at 5 p.m. and worship service at 6 p.m. with holding evening prayer. And also, please be mindful that this Wednesday, the dinner will be a fundraiser for our youth group as they prepare for this summer's gathering down New Orleans. And then next Sunday, we begin Holy Week. It's Palm Sunday. And then services during Holy Week will be 6 p.m. on Monday, Thursday, March 28th, and Good Friday, March 29th. And at this time, we have a video. My name is Elton Bullard, and I'll be reading you Saturday at the Food Pantry by Diane O'Neill. Dinner, Mom called. Chili again, Molly asked. They'd have it every day this week. Last week, too. Yup, Mom said. Tastes even better. The spices sink in. Mom ladled the last of the chili into their bowls. That's Molly. That's Molly's mom. We have fancy milk, too, Molly grinned. She watched her mom pour milk into the sugar and spices in her cup. Mom shook the, cur the milk carton, just a tiny splash, and put it in the refrigerator. Tomorrow we'll get food, Mom said. We're going shopping? Molly's eyes lit up. Chicken and spaghetti and ice cream. Well, short of, we're going to a food pantry. What's a food pantry, Molly asked. It's a place for people who need food. Mom stood straight, her chin high. Everybody needs help sometimes. At bedtime, Mom usually made fancy milk and, a, and read a story. Tonight, just a story. Molly tossed and turned, trying to sleep. Her hunger growled. See that? That's me. I'm lucky. The next morning, they walked to the food pantry. Why do we need to wait, Molly asked. The pantry isn't open yet. Mom said it's only open certain hours. Molly pulled paper and crayons out of her backpack. She started drawing. Then she looked up. Mom, look, look, Mom, there's Kaylin. She's in my class. Hey, Kaylin. Kaylin looked away. Kaylin is this little girl right here. It's her classmate. Molly ran over to her. Didn't you hear me? Kaylin looked down. I don't want anybody to know Grand and I need help. She whispered. Oh, Molly said. Molly continued to walk back to her mom. So this is Kaylin and her grandma, and this is Molly right here. Was there something wrong with needing help? Molly wanted to go home, but she was hungry. You okay, mom asked. Why don't you draw me a picture? I love your drawings. The woman in front of them turned, smiled at Molly. An artist, will you draw one for me too? That's the woman that asked her. Molly pulled out her crayons again, maybe drawing a happy picture would cheer her up. Hey, can you draw me a picture too? Me too, will you draw me one also? Molly ran to Caitlin with paper and crayons in her hands. Help, everybody wants pictures. I can't draw that fast. Caitlin looked up and said, well, okay. Here you go. Look, that's them drawing pictures and that's everybody asking them for a picture right here. Soon a woman opened the door. Molly and Caitlin each handled her picture. Thank you, what wonderful gifts, she said. Welcome, please sign in, said the man at the desk. Mom didn't have to sign her name when they went to the grocery store. Molly thought, but the, but the man smiled at them. Thanks, grab a cart and stop when, here when you're done. 
Lots of good food today. Thanks, Mom said. She smiled, but just a little. Not like when they played in the park. That's them handing the woman a picture. And that's Molly's mom uh, checking in. The food pantry was like the little store where they sometimes bought bread and milk. Cans and boxes were on plain metal shelves. Molly ran toward a shelf and picked a box of sugar cookies. No, Mom said. Then she whispered. Let them, thanks, grab a car and stop when, here when you're done. Lots of good food today. Thanks, Mom said. She smiled, but just a little. Not like when they played in the park. That's them handing the woman a picture. And that's Molly's mom uh, checking in. The food pantry was like the little store where they sometimes bought bread and milk. Cans and boxes were on plain metal shelves. Molly ran toward a shelf and picked a box of sugar cookies. No, Mom said. Then she whispered. They, the people in charge don't want us to take sensible stuff. Mom's face turned pink. Molly's eyes widened. Why did her mom think that? Why were, your, why were cookies here if you weren't supposed to take them? The woman at the door and the man at the desk had seemed nice. Would they really not want Molly and her mom to have cookies? Molly swallowed tears. She put the cookies back. They would have been good with fancy milk. Here she is. And look, she's sad because she didn't get the cookies. Hey, put food in the cart, Mom sighed. Just like Caitlin, Mom looked like she wanted to be invisible, but none of them were doing anything wrong. Everybody needs help sometimes, Molly whispered to her mom. Remember? Mom smiled. You're right. Molly pointed at, at a sign on a huge bin of fruit. What if somebody wants two cantaloupes? A lot of people need help, Mom said. They had to make sure they have enough food for everybody who comes here. Molly and Mom put oranges and a cantaloupe in their car. Here it is. That's the cantaloupes right here. Mom handed Molly cans of corn, tomatoes, and clean peri peaches, bags of red beans, pinto beans, and brown rice, a loaf of wheat bread, a box of oatmeal, and a box of sugar, spaghetti noodles, sauce, and grated cheese, raisins and tuna, and peanut butter too. Mom reached for a big box of powdered milk. We'll have fancy milk tonight. Here it is. That's Molly getting all the stuff for her mom. And here she is grabbing the milk powder right here. They checked out at the desk. The man pointed to the wall. Oh, Molly ran to Kaylin. Come here, look. Molly's rainbows sparkled. Kaylin's elf grinned. I was in a sad mood, the man said. Your artwork, your artwork helped. Thank you. He put the groceries into a bag. Then he handed Molly's mom a box of sugar cookies. Saw your little girl looking at these. She can have them. If that's okay with you, ma'am. Mom had a funny look, almost like she wanted to cry. She nodded. Thank you. Everybody deserves a treat. The man enjoyed. The man said enjoyed. That's their pictures on the wall. Here it is. Um, Molly's mom getting cookies from the man. Molly and mom walked home. They each carried a bulging bag. Molly, she looked around and saw Kaylin and her grand. I didn't know you lived so close, Mom said to Kaylin's grand. How nice, we're neighbors, Kaylin's grand said. I keep looking forward. They closed the factory, Mom said. I've been sick, said Kaylin's grand. We got lots of yummy food, Molly said. Do you, did you? Yeah, Kaylin shrugged. I just, we didn't have to come to a food pantry. Here he is. They ran into each other. Molly said, but everybody needs help sometimes. And we helped. We cheered people up. Kaylin grinned. We did, didn't we? I have an idea. Let's have lunch together, Molly said. Yes, Kaylin agreed. And we have dessert. Molly said, the man at the pantry gave me sugar cookies. There's enough for all of us. Let's eat. Here we are talking. And they did. This is them having dinner and lunch. Look, and they have bread, stuff like that. Wonderful. Well, I am up in the balcony, sorry. I'm not gonna run downstairs, but I just wanted to say thank you to Elton,
who has been a visiting friend here at Our Saviors. Uh, he read that delightful book called Saturday at the Food Pantry. And it's just a nice little reminder that this is March Food Share Month, and we are just asking for donations for the Salvation Army. We try, traditionally, we try to fill the back pews with bags of food. So if you are able and willing, we would love to see the back pews fill up with food that we can donate to the Salvation Army here in town. I also have another reminder that we would like to capture the most important part of your outfit, the smile. So Sunday, March 24th through Sunday, April 7th, we will be putting up a, a makeshift photo, sh photo area in the fireside room. And when you come to church on a Sunday or throughout Holy Week, we would love to see you in the fireside room and we will snap your picture. Bring your whole family. We would love that. Um, then this, this picture, we will obviously, we will send it to you so you have a beautiful family portrait. But we would also like to put it into our updated Our Saviors directory. So we'll be asking for that information as well. If you are not able to be here during this short time frame, that is absolutely fine. You can certainly send me one of your pictures through email or text message. Or we can set up a time during the week if that works better for you. Just let me know. You can email me. Thank you. We continue now with our call to worship. Why are you here? I see it. You're in the right place. This is God's house. The door is open to you. I am seeking God with my whole heart, with my entire mind, with a fire burning in my bones. Let us worship God. I invite those able, please rise as we sing our song.
Please be seated. Friends, when you study Peter's story in scripture, it's almost impossible to ignore how much he loved to ask questions. He asked Jesus, what does the parable mean? Where are you going? How many times should we forgive? Like a tenacious toddler, Peter was full of questions because Peter was eager to learn. I wish we were more like that. We still have so much to learn. Friends, let's be like Peter. Let's return to Christ with the humility of a student as we pray together the prayer of confession. Let this be a moment of learning. Let us pray. Holy God, we long to be lifelong learners. We long to approach you with curiosity and an open mind. Instead, we often live as if we know best. We forget that the disciples called you rabbi, teacher. Forgive us for the times when we fail to be curious. Forgive us for the times when we assume we know best. Forgive us for the moments when we imagine that our learning is done and that we have all the answers. Like Peter, who was brave enough to ask, how many times should we forgive? Make us brave. Spark a desire in us to learn. And may our curiosity carry our faith into deeper water. With hope and humility, we pray. Amen. Family of faith, when Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Jesus responded with abundance. That abundance exists for you as well. No matter what you've done or left undone, no matter what lessons you've learned or you are still learning, God's abundant grace exists for you. God's love will never run out. So hear and rest in this good news. You are forgiven. You are loved you are invited to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. Teaching God. We want to learn your ways. We want to learn the ways of forgiveness. We want to learn the ways of grace. We want to learn your ways of love. That is part of why we return to your text week after week, because we are hungry to be more like you, so as we prepare to listen to your good word, calm the noise in our minds. Center our spirits to focus on you so that we might learn and hear what we have missed in this story before. God, we want to learn your ways. Meet us here. Speak your truth. Help us listen. Amen. This morning's reading is from Psalm 119, and it will be read responsively by whole verse. I'll begin with the odd verses. How shall the young keep their way clean? By keeping to your word. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. With my lips, I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite those able to please stand for the reading of the gospel this day. 
The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. Reproving another who sins. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out that fault. When the two of you are alone, if the member listens to you, you've regained that one. But if you're not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by God in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Forgiveness. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. The Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. Yummy candy. Hey, that's mine! No! Sarah was so sad that Joe stole her candy. My candy! My candy! Now Joe started to regret stealing Sarah's candy. I'm sad. Sarah's not going to want to be my friend. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 to 22, Jesus teaches about the importance of forgiveness. Sarah, I'm sorry for what I did. Can you please forgive me? No, you are horrible to me. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. I'm sorry that I ate your candy. Please forgive me, please. Fine, I'll try. Jesus also said, truly I tell you, if you forgive someone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive, Thank you, sir. Your forgiveness means everything to me. You're, you're welcome. That's the floor. I've never asked to speak louder than words. And so Joe and Sarah demonstra- demonstrated the power of forgiveness following the teaching of Jesus. Thank you for your forgiveness. I'll take this now. You know what? We can share it. Thank you, Sarah. In a world filled with conflict and hurt, may we all learn to forgive as we have been forgiven. Yeah, sure, of course. Thank you to our students these past few weeks who've been giving us those children's message videos. Dear friends, grace and peace to you from God and the Lord Jesus. Amen. Today it's about repentance and forgiveness. Now keep in mind since last week's text, Jesus has been transfigured high on a mountain He has cured a little boy. He continues to speak of his death and resurrection. The disciples are now in Capernaum, where Jesus is teaching about sin and forgiveness, emphasizing again and again protection for children and little ones. In last week's text, Peter was rebuked by Jesus, who goes and calls him Satan, the tempter. And we can probably imagine that the waters of Peter faith have been troubled. As disorienting and difficult as that can be, acknowledging how little we know can be a mark, however, of mature faith, of growth. So possibly now, this Sunday, we can seek the courage to move forward in our faith and to continue to grow. For in this week's story, Peter shows us proof of his growth. He's asking follow-up questions, intent and open to learning, as dealing with community conflict will surely be a major part of his work as a leader in the church. For remember, Jesus renames him Petrus, Peter, the rock of the church. So in Sanctified Arts, the question is, 
as we begin. How does Peter process and comprehend Jesus' answer? And more importantly, through our series of The Wandering Heart and Finding Out Faith with Peter, this question is for us. How do we process and comprehend Jesus' answer this morning? His answer to repentance and forgiveness. Now, as we know, Peter is often all or nothing, either resisting Jesus or drawing closer to him in earnest. He asks a question, and he might be expecting a straightforward answer. How many times should I forgive somebody else? Instead, Jesus' math is not predictable. It is infinite. Forgiveness is abundant. Grace is not earned. Forgiveness continues. The next question is for us. In your own faith, do you find comfort in theological formulas that give you some sort of certainty? Do you wish for Jesus, do you wish for God, to always give you straightforward answers? Or can you embrace the infinite colors of grace? The answers that might not be the ones you expect. Jesus' answer today certainly must have surprised Peter. Jesus, along with St. Peter, and today, since it's St. Patrick's Day, along with St. Patrick, they are often a surprise to us. Jesus and the saints. St. Patrick's Day. Today, most people don't really understand who he was or what this day is about and how it connects up rather well with our gospel. You see, today is much more than about eating green foods and drinking green liquids and even for us being dressed in green. It's so much more beyond that. This is a 5th century saint of the church, Patrick, born in Britain and at 16, taken by Irish raiders. He was forced into slavery in Ireland. Six years, he serves as a herdsman, during which he turns to the Christian faith, he becomes a priest and an agent of repentance and forgiveness. The love of God and trust grew in me more and more, as did the faith, St. Patrick wrote. The legend that he's associated with is that he used the shamrock to explain the concept of the Holy Trinity. You know, the three in one, the three persons in one God. And he did it for an unbeliever by showing him the three-leaf plant along with that one stalk. Three in one. Just like with Peter. We tend to see our saints in just one certain way, often misunderstanding. Peter, he's either a staunch believer or he's a turncoat, rebuking, even betraying Jesus, just after Jesus announces his final ministry. So in our series now of Wandering Heart, as we figure out our faith with Peter, we find that his faith life, just as ours, is nuanced. There are no easy answers. And most of the time, when we have questions for God, when we question what Jesus says and does, the answers that he gives us are surprising and maybe counterintuitive. Peter, the disciples, the saints, All those who follow Jesus find that faith is a growth experience with our questions and with the answers we receive. It is not a straightforward upward line. Faith is a wave. Faith ebbs and flows throughout our life. Like Peter, at times we'll feel strong in our faith and other times will be filled with doubts and questions. But in each of our times, our faith grows. 
For in this journey, we find an unexpected Jesus, who more often than not gives Peter and all others unexpected answers. Not maybe what we want, but always what we need. Now, some of the answers we get, we may never fully understand. Some we may not like. Others we may find challenging in order to follow. That's true of repentance and forgiveness. The answer that Jesus gives today, it may be difficult to follow. I mean, we are the people where we tend to judge who is worthy, who is sincere, as opposed to God. God who accepts all, all of us at face value. Repentance. Is the person really repentant? That's usually the question that springs to mind. Or like Peter, how many times, Lord, must we forgive that person? The answer, unexpected, is a God answer. Forgiveness. Drawing close to the wound. What happens when you are denied forgiveness? is an article in the Presbyterian Outlook written last year by Katie Shevel. In this article, Ms. Shevel shares her experience and how she's finding a way forward with this difficult part about repentance and forgiveness. <clears throat> in her reflection, Katie describes a situation with a friend in which she asks for forgiveness. She repents, but she is denied forgiveness. She grapples with what this means in light of Christ's free gift of grace. God, who forgives any and all repentant. God, who does not judge the level of our sincerity or how many times we repent. She writes, my friend isn't ready to forgive me yet. But this doesn't negate the truth that God's promise of forgiveness and work of reconciliation is still at work in both of our lives. Repentance doesn't always ensure forgiveness from others. But that's where we are called to be different. You and I, all those who follow Jesus, just like Peter, when he asked the question, how many times? We are called to the answer that Jesus gives. An infinite number of times, we are to forgive the repentant. Because God forgives us, the repentant, an infinite number of times. Our calling is to always forgive the repentant an innumerable number of times, just as God forgives us over and over and over again. Now maybe repentance and forgiveness isn't something you can comprehend intellectually. Perhaps repentance and forgiveness must be lived and embodied. And perhaps we must experience it for ourselves in order to understand. In your journey with Jesus, may you experience, not only for yourself, but experience and share it with others, the gift of repentance and forgiveness an infinite number of times. Amen.
we affirm our faith. We believe that questions are a building block of faith. How many times should I forgive? Jesus, where are you going? What must I do to inherit eternal life? We believe that humble curiosity can open our eyes. Where does it hurt? What do you need? How can I help? We believe that God is a teacher. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Here I am. Send me. We believe that faith invites our whole being to engage with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. We believe, help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community, we give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, God. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, God. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children especially Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran Immigration Services. Hear us, God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, God. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation, especially our caregivers. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. We lift up today Kevin, Kelly, <clears throat> Marion, Karen, Lori, Gary, and all those we name in our hearts. Hear us, God. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially St. Patrick, missionary to Ireland, whom we commemorate today. Continue to work in us our calling of repentance and forgiveness. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love and forgiveness. Hear us, God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Christ Jesus, our Messiah and Savior, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share God's peace with one another. We worship God with our offering.
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we've gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. When Jesus ate with his disciples, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and passed it to his disciples, saying, Drink. This cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break bread and share the one cup. Thanks be to God. With grateful hearts, we run toward you. With feet in the garden and eyes on the cross, we pray to you, saying the words your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus has always been one to invite. You are invited. This table is for you, for everyone. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and all are welcome.
generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may your heart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. You are called. You are blessed. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go, trusting that good news. Amen. I invite those able, please rise as we sing. Go in peace, share repentance and forgiveness.